I want to welcome everyone to the webinar today. I appreciate you joining, um, focusing on why your digital marketing is not selling cars for your dealership. My name is John Isaac. I'm a strategy manager. Been here with Pure Cars for two years. I'm also a 20 year uh, auto industry vet. I started off in the car business as a salesperson. Uh, moved up to internet director, sales manager, and then eventually uh, owned my own lot. This is the reason why I think this makes me uniquely qualified to uh, fuse together um, retail part with the digital. So all the things I'm going to talk about are going to be from both perspectives. Today's agenda is going to be focused around the misconceptions about digital marketing, why dealers may think digital isn't working, and using simple mathematics to boost sales. These things were derived from conversations and interactions I had with our dealer clients. Now, myth busting, that's what I'm gonna do with this part here. Uh, a lot of dealers have brought these particular misconceptions up and I wanna address each one of them. The system can be gained. A lot of dealers believe that there are little tricks and shortcuts that you can use in order to game the system when it comes to digital. And I want to say that's not true. I want to say it's optimization. Um, the platform, uh, the landscape is an even one. What makes it unique is the people who you hire to actually optimize and their knowledge on being able to make the system better for you. Uh, second misconception, we, we sell the same amount of cars with or without digital. I had a dealer actually say, you know, if I took away digital, I guarantee you I sell them the same amount of cars. And I want to say that that's not the case. Today, digital is the new norm. And what I mean by the new norm, back long time ago, when I was in the car business in 99, we had newspaper, TV, radio. That was the norm. If you took that away, business would have sunk. So I say the same thing about digital. It's all a scam, that's another one. They feel like it's a scam um, because they're pinned against each other. That's what the, you know, a lot of the dealer clients that um, I speak to say, hey, you know, we're pinned against each other, we're in the same geographical area and we're like cannibalizing each other, right? And I say, well, when you go to the auction, the car auction and you bid for a car and someone outbids you, do you think that's a scam or is that you just being outbid? And they, their response usually is that just being outbidded. And that's the same thing it is with um, these particular platforms. It's nothing but option based, so it's not a scam. Uh, the metrics are made up. Well, the complicated thing here is, is the fact that digital is transparent. And because it's transparent, people can see inside and be more critical of everything they see. And I think that's where the lack of faith sometimes comes in the metrics because you can see the cake being baked. So you're going to criticize it when you taste it. But if you never see it baked, you'll probably praise it when you eat it. And that's where this comes from. Um, the last one is it's too expensive. Now, this one makes me laugh. And the reason why it makes me laugh is, uh, again, I've been in the car business a long time and too expensive is uh, not the language I would use for digital today. And that leads me to the, to the actual next slide. If you remember traditional advertising, you're talking about expensive. Remember those full page newspaper ads on Saturday morning? You've been to Saturday morning meeting and you know you have all the different ads, you're going over them, you're game planning, getting ready for Saturday, because that's our Super Bowl day, right? And uh, you spent about 7,000 or more dollars for full page uh, work for ads. And that's for one day. Now, you got to think about that, comparing spending seven to $10,000 for your digital marketing per month. So that's why I kind of laugh at that particular misconception. Radio being up there, five. Yeah, TV, we don't even want to go there. TV can be just, you know, way out of pocket. Um, and then billboards. Billboards cost a lot of money. And back uh, in traditional times, they didn't move, there was no motion to them, so it was just uh, you know, static. And mailers are probably the only ones that have the greatest return uh, far as being able to track the greatest return on investment because you, you actually know when some com someone comes in and actually hands it to you. 
So I do kind of uh, um, laugh at the too expensive remark when it comes to that. Now, do you guys remember this? Now, for anyone who hasn't been in the business um, for more than probably, uh, I'd say, four or five years, you know, you, you might not be familiar with some of the names you see there, Auto by Tail. Um, but this is the only way that we used to have and determine a return for investment because we didn't have any other way to be able to determine, you know, who actually seen the advertisement. So all we did was we took how many leads we had on a specific car and how much those leads cost. And if that car sold, that was our return on investment. So, you know, we either hired or fired vendors with leads um, based on these types of results. And that was the way that we did it back then. But in today's time, we start moving forward with digital. It's not the same. When desktop came along, and the internet came along with it, um, you start to see a little bit more accountability. You start to see you know, a little bit more transparency. Now, of course, we were dealing with, uh, you know, I call it the early numbers when you say how many impressions you had. We didn't know anything about clicks or anything like that <laughs> back in 2008. We were focusing on, I had a million impressions and that made you impressed. Uh, but we fast forward all the way to 2019. Now we got every kind of um, media source there is from Instagram, Facebook, you know, Snapchat, and every single one of these show transparency. It shows an ROI. You can actually dig all the way down to the decimal point, right? So with that, you know, it brings a little bit more credibility to me, but also it brings a little bit of scrutiny. And so let's compare the two, traditional and digital. Now, we all seen charts where it shows something similar to this. But what I want to focus on is really the demographic. If you look at television, you had a guy come in and sell you and say, hey, you know, we have this much uh, eyeballs on the tubes for this uh, particular show that you're going to be advertised around. And you might like, wow, great but you didn't know how many of those eyeballs actually paid attention to your commercial or, you know, they might've got up and used the bathroom or they might've been attended to something else while the commercial was on, but you had no idea. Same thing with newspaper, circulation, circulation, circulation. You didn't know who uh, actually seen the ads. You hope that they came in and said they seen it, but sometimes that wasn't the case. And you can see just going down the list there, I don't have to beat a dead horse, but you can see direct mail, there's a little bit more targeted where a person can come in and actually show you. So that was your greatest return on investment in the traditional sense. Now, in the digital, they all have ROI tracking. So it's all targeted. So with search, display, social, video, anything, we can show you all the way down to the click, the conversions, uh, where they came from. It's getting even more detail in today's world where you can actually see the uh, attribution trail um, to the sale. So with that being said, I think it's kind of ironic. Well, you see Lance Morset here, one of my uh, favorite artists. <laughs> um, it's kind of ironic because we put more expectations on digital now that we can see everything. But in the old days, when we were just using traditional, we just went on our gut. You know, that's a Saturday morning when we when we launched out there with that full page ad and we sold a bunch of cars, we just assumed it was the full page ad. We had no true proof. But in today's world with the digital, we have higher expectations. And I think that's kind of ironic. So let's look at the expectations and see how realistic that is, right? So, you know, expectation is digital marketing will sell more cars for us. In actuality, digital marketing drives traffic and opportunities. It doesn't sell cars. Our people sell cars. We have control over search demand. Demand is not created, it's captured and influenced. So you can't say, hey, let's you know, try to squeeze more people to um, demand a certain type of car. How many people want that car is gonna be how many people want that car. You can't force more people into the market wanting that car, at least on a tier three level. I mean, tier one, they try to influence through branding and so forth, but um, when we're dealing with the dealership level, no. Now, digital marketing makes customers want to buy. This is a big one because, you know, everyone wants to get to the buyer. 
Everyone wants to get the guy who wants to buy tomorrow. Now, you have to understand, sometimes you have to get the researcher before you get the buyer. So, you know, but we can't force people to want to buy. You know, if they're not in the market for, you know, a certain car, then they're not in the market for that car. Now, the whole thing is you hope to be able to influence them as you move forward. And maybe they'll become a buyer in the future because they are in the market. So these are just some of the expectations versus uh, reality. And so I wanted to address that because it's real big. When I talk to my dealer clients, I always like to clear this up. So that way we are, are working with the right foundation. And again, uh, one of my old favorite cartoons here, uh, South Park. Um, digital marketing uh, drives opportunities. Your salespeople are going to sell them when they're on the lot. And I like to use the word opportunity rather than leads, even though I will interchange them a little bit just for the sake of our, you know, our thought process. But I think in today's world with traffic, traffic is opportunities. It's not leads. Leads are what, what it used to be in a traditional sense. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Oh, oops. Oh, it's moving. Having a little technical difficulties here. Okay, now I got out that one. Okay, so the demand is not created, it is captured. We said this. Now, these particular metrics I want you to pay attention to because when we're talking about digital uh, and traditional and we're talking about whether digital can sell cars for you, these are the type of metrics to look for in digital. So, we capture tra traffic captures the actual individuals that are looking and demanding uh, for what you have. And that's going to be the metrics focused on impressions and clicks and click throughs. Um, I just had a dealer I spoke to today that we were talking about their ads and where their ads were being successful. And the way that you can tell that is through click through rate. If your click through rate is good, then you know your ads are working well. And uh, the industry benchmark is about 4% right now. So if there's anything above that, then you know the ads are working. And vice versa, if it's not above that, then you know that the ads might be a little bit of a problem. But um, traffic is how you actually capture that particular demand. Now, engagement is how you're going to start influencing them. So it's going to be what's on your uh, VDP and SRP page, so the vehicles you have, how they're being merchandised, the price points, um, you know, the availability, you know, whether you have good directions, things of that nature. That's going to be a big determining factor on the engagement and influence on that particular person looking for uh, a vehicle. The unique part here is that we're a partnership. We can, you know, we, I say vendors who are in the digital marketing space, can do a great job with the ads and send them to your SRP and VDPs and make them land on the right areas, but your, your site has to be the one that actually influences it. Now, the conversions on the end is something that makes me salivate because I, I was a former internet guy and, and sales manager, so I look at conversions, and that's the, I, I call it the other capturing. So once you influenced on the site, now you want to capture those opportunities. So you want the phone calls, you want the finance forms, you want the service requests, you want the chats. You want all those particular things because that's your opportunities to talk to the person, sell the person, and it's a live body. So these are the things that really, really hit the bottom line. And that's the reason why I want to kind of explain when you're looking at digital, this is the way you need to look at it in the success. How's your traffic? How's your engagement? How's your conversions? Now, digital marketing, cash and demand, this is kind of like a, a good chart here just showing you the flow. Uh, again, these are, the, these are the media sources that actually are utilized, you know, search, social video, display, uh, other type of apps, and it does drive the web traffic. As we've seen in the previous one, we gave you the particular metrics on that. Um, and here in the middle, you see inventory engagement. Now, in the previous slide, I said engagement was something that was based 
on what your site was doing. Well, inventory engagement is kind of a partnership. Your vendor, your digital marketing vendor has to land them on the right pages, right? So that's the first thing. So we have to hand the baton correctly. If we don't hand it correctly, then that can cause uh, digital not to be effective. So that's one way to determine whether digital is actually not helping you sell cards. That's an area that you always need to look at. Secondly, your part. When we land them on the right page, then you have to have it merchandised correctly in order to be able to uh, do that influence. And of course, set appointments, show, and, and, and sell. Um, no one can do that for you but your salespeople. So I think that's very important to see this particular flow. Now, in diagnosing the problem, um, now this looks very simple. You guys are probably familiar with it. If you're not, this is something that you can look at. This is just an easy, clean, quick way to just see if traffic's the problem or is it internal problems, right? Because it's that partnership. So if you look at the first line, it's saying, hey, I had uh, five, 500 opportunities. And again, I want to get away from the word lead because, you know, certain things aren't hardcore type of leads, uh, but it's traffic. So if you said this month I had 500 opportunities and we have a closing ratio of 12%, you sold 60 cars. So the following month, if you're saying, hey, we sold less cars, we only sold 50. You see that, that next line? We only sold 50 cars. And you look and say, hey, but we still have the same amount of opportunities, 500. What happened? Well, you look, the closing ratio fell. So where do you think the problem lies? Hmm. Yeah, internal. This is a good way to be able to do a test. And then the next line shows you that is external because your closing rate was the same, but you sold less cars and then you seen traffic went down. Now, it's not necessarily saying that there's a problem. It's just saying that some things might need to be optimized. Uh, there might have been more competition that showed up uh, online. So um, it's just ways to be able to address it. But this lets you know um, on top what the diagnosis is to be able to talk with your vendor. And this is something I go over with some of my dealers um, to be able to give them enlightenment so that way we can see if we need to dive deeper. <laughs> now, I, I don't know if any of you guys remember this game here. I might be dating myself a little bit, but you know, it's the money grab, right? Uh, stick yourself in there, see how much you can grab. Well, you know, the reason why I like this particular image is because it's all about your process, what, what you have inside. Do you have enough hands or people to grab all the opportunities that you see? Because we can give you all the traffic in the world, all the dollar bills they're from, but if you don't have the process in place to be able to grab it, mm, then you're going to waste a lot of money. So one of the things that I always encourage um, dealer clients to do is to always do an audit and evaluate their process on the inside just to make sure that you're not missing out on opportunities and see if uh, there are ways that you can improve. So keeping up with the traffic. Now you're saying, well, hey, we're doing everything right on the inside. Digital staying the same. Everything's the same. We're just flat. We're at a plateau, right? Um, so again, I say that's the new norm, that digital has taken the place of a lot of uh, traditional things and now has become the norm. In the beginning, it gave you that big boost and that big lift, and you're so excited, and everyone working with you was excited, but then pretty soon, after a year or two, it became flat. And so you got to ask yourself, are you doing everything there is to do in digital? A lot of times we think of digital as Google AdWords, and that's it, search. But we don't explore beyond that. Digital's beyond just search. Are you doing any display retargeting? And are you providing good incentives and things of that nature for your retargeting? With us, we, we encourage our dealers to um, uh, work with us to get incentives that are enticing to people for retargeting, not just something generic and, and, and flat. And also, are you doing video? Video is really, really, really big right now. And if you're doing television, you're not doing video, you're really missing out. Because I can tell you what, majority of people I see, their face is stuck in their phone and they're watching videos. 
and they're not watching as much television. Look at yourself. Think about yourself. Do you watch a lot of television or you watch more, more videos online? Um, social media, are you doing Facebook? Facebook is a great way to be able to uh, expand and be able to boost your sales. I mean, you're able to target people's uh, behaviors and lifestyles and, and you're actually able to say, this is the type of person I'm, I wanna be in front of. And Facebook is open on people's phone all the time. They never close it. And they're constantly checking it. It's one of the most checked apps on mobile. So you have to think about, do you wanna be in front of them? So if you're not doing that, you can't quite complain about your sales not being boosted because you're not doing everything it takes to do it. And then, you know, search engine optimization, you know, not just the traditional with the content, but are you doing things like with Google My Business and so forth? Um, are you doing things to be able to really drive in those phone calls and, and that foot tracker? So I wanted to make sure that we focused on that part for boosting sales, because this is a way that you can control it in diversity of your marketing. Now, this is important to me. You see Oscar over here? Oscar is older than me. I watched Oscar when I was a child. I, I, I love him. Um, <laughs> but I, I do ask the question, you know, uh, do, do you really love trash? You know, uh, what kind of data do you have internally? You're saying you have a 12% closing ratio, but who told you that? Where did it come from, right? Who, where's your integrity in your data? Who's, who's managing it? What system are you using, CRM? Now, when I ran the internet department, I actually was in control of building out the whole CRM as far as formulas and so forth to give us results on what we were looking at. So who's building that out? And is everything being counted? Now, when I was in the car business as a salesperson, if, if I had somebody come in and they looked at a car and I, it didn't look like they can buy and I was judging a book by its cover and the manager didn't see him, I kicked them down the road and didn't even mention that they came in. I didn't want to count against my numbers. And you know guys are still doing that. You're trying to capture them. You know it's been going on for years. No one actually puts down all their, their contacts and ups and phone calls. So what is, your, what is your system to be able to make sure that you count everyone? You want to count everyone. The reason why you want to count everyone is because you want to know the truth. You don't want someone just stroking you behind the ear to make you happy. So that's very important when it comes to your data integrity. Oh man, one of my favorite movies, okay? Um, Life and the car business is the game of inches. This is Al Pacino. Uh, Al Pacino gave the famous speech in the locker room. He says, uh, the inches we need all around us. You're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. And there's a man who's willing to claw for that inch and die for that inch. And that's the truth. You're all around us. And what are you willing to do for those inches? Now that brings me to additional KPIs. This is more internal. When I ran the internet department, I came up with uh, a system called a scorecard. And I was influenced by other scorecards that I've seen online and I grabbed and put it together. So I'm not gonna act like this is my ingenious idea, right? But it was it looks something similar to this. So I ask you, do you have a scorecard for everybody in your dealership? Do you have a scorecard for every salesperson? For everybody with responsibility for driving sales? If you had a scorecard for each person, then you can see which person needs help, which person is doing the most work, instead of going on a gut feeling, all right? You're able to see who can handle uh, store visits versus who can handle chats. If you look at the, the closing ratios, you might say, hey, you know, John can't handle, you know, chats, but he can handle store visits. So you'll be able to focus on the activities, not the sale. Where can I put my people in best position? Who's the strongest where? Now, let me go a step further than that, all right? You want to focus on if John ended up with 10 sales, based on these numbers. If I got John to improve on five more appointments, maybe, you know, three more demos, you know, five more test drives, you might be able to see more sales and you can actually tie it to that. So instead of focusing on the sale, you focus on the metrics, just like we do in digital. 
We focus on the metrics, how to optimize things to make the metric, make those numbers, individual numbers move up for the overall success to be in play. And that's the same thing that you should do here. And this is a recommendation. I'm not saying I'm the god of, uh, you know, cars, but this worked very well for me. And I got this really because when I was in the car business, a guy named Joe Verdi, and he had a system. And um, I, I was just like Forrest Gump. I'm going to take the system. I'm going to believe it like the Bible. Right. And I focused on all my my activity. I said, OK, how many fresh ups I had, how many demos, how many walk arounds, how many write ups. And I focused on those numbers. And I can give you a close ratio for every single one of those ticker things, activities. I knew if I shook your hand, I had a 30 percent chance. I knew if I gave you a test drive, it went up to a 60 percent close ratio. And I knew and this is one thing that made me a little I say arrogant when I was in the car business. I knew if you came in and you sat at my desk, you were done deal, 95% closing rate. So all I had to do if I wanted to increase my sales was increase the activities and I knew I can increase my sales. So I would say, I would encourage you if you don't have a scorecard to get a scorecard, um, you probably can send us an email and we'll send you a copy of this and you can play around with it, change it, do as you wish. Because if you don't have a vendor who's actually looking at how you're handling the traffic and the partnership, then why do you have them? I mean, you, they should be concerned about what's happening on the inside just as well as on the outside. And, and that's that's my preaching, right? But, but I'm a big believer in that. So let's bring it all together. Key takeaways. Let's be clear on digital expectations versus dealership expectations. Let's make sure we have our expectations lining up together so that way we can have complete success and there's no you know miscommunication and there's no mis no no mis uh, conceptions about anything okay so also only you can sell a vehicle once a customer is at the store i mean i don't mean to beat a dead horse but this is the honest truth i can deliver them but you have to be able to sell them I could bring a I could bring a Greyhound bus with a hundred people and drop them off at your lot. That's all I can do. Your people got to sell them once they're on the lot, and your website is the virtual lot. Now, the last one is use your scorecard to track your inside, your internal, basically your external. So you should be, you know, doing your evaluation with your, you know, digital uh, vendor and looking at those metrics and you should make them show you those metrics and prove how it's increasing and how it's working and you should ask all the questions and they should be accountable for it because i know we are but then also you have to make sure your internal team is accountable they have to be accountable for accountable for the gift that is given to them that the, the money that's being spent the traffic so this is basically what I'm looking at when dealers are asking, <laughs> uh, why is digital not boosting my sales? Now I want to open up to any particular questions. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please uh, shoot them to us. All right, some questions should just come in. So give us a second here. I'm going to answer those. Okay, one question is, um, why do some vendors not uh, show is it do not show adwords and just give a report oh well <laughs> well um that's one of the things i do pride ourselves on here um i have no problem showing uh our clients uh, adwords um a report just tells you the results right it doesn't show you the ingredients that went into it uh the hard work that went into it so uh you know 
I would say most definitely, um, you know, if they're not showing you the, the, the guts of everything, then what do they have to hide? That's the true question. Okay, um, question here says, what role, if any, should digital marketing vendors play in on uh, page SEO? Well, I can say with us, we, we have um, um, developed a great product called Seek. And um, I think really SEO, uh, from that perspective, is going to be focused around more of uh, um, local searching optimizations where you know you're showing up in the map pack and you are shown you're shown more relevant to you know uh, getting those phone calls it's sort of like in, similar to the restaurant business you know where you can make reservations uh, and I think it just recently didn't they come out with a, a book it or a reservation type of button for a car dealership so that form of SEO, I think your vendors should be deeply involved in. I know we don't get into the deep content type, the traditional sense. We do a little bit just to, you know, uh, to kind of uh, enhance it, but we focus more on where Google's moving. And Google's moving more towards actually being relevant with, uh, with the, the actual search on the go, mobile. And uh, as I said to uh, uh, a group before, it's really going to the uh, one click. Uh, everything's one click away. And that's what Google, that's why you got the reservation button and the book it button. And that's where it's going. So that's what we focus on. Okay, here's one. Um, so how can I, increase my conversions on the website um, if it's my responsibility. <laughs> well, okay, so again, partnership, right? So what we do with a lot of our clients is that we do a, a website audit and we'll go and audit their website, look at other people, the competitor's website, look at pricing, look at how the, uh, the photos are um, set up or see if there's a dirty, you know, background or, uh, whether the cards are facing the right direction, whether the buttons are in the right location, where's the user experience? And then I can tell you, this is a big one. Um, we go to mobile. When you go to mobile, you're able to see if banners are showing up instead of the, the, the website. Uh, so, you know, those particular things could be hindering conversions while you're getting good traffic to the site. So we, we, we feel like we're vested uh, with our dealers. So we tend to go a little bit above and beyond and actually dig into it and be able to see what the root problem is and be able to see how we can optimize it and help you out. Now, sometimes, you know, uh, a, a dealer might accept it or not, but it's okay because you, you hire your vendor to at least give you that information. And that's what's important. Um, so let me see the next question. Okay, so uh, next question is, am I gonna send out a copy of the scorecard? Gladly. I think everyone should have the scorecard. Not because I'm behind it, it's because I know what it does. So we most definitely will be sending out the scorecard. Um, and you know, yeah, I know that, you know, people, we don't wanna necessarily get flooded with a lot, a lot of uh, uh, emails about certain things, but I like to be flooded with how well it's working for you. I, I'm, I'm interested in how things work for people. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'd be interested in that once you get the scorecard. Okay, the last one is what separates pure cars from other companies that offer similar services? Guess what? It's me. It's the others that work here. That's what I'm saying. The uniqueness of who you're working with. Uh, what makes your dealership different than any other dealership down the street that sells the same car you sell at the same price you sell it? 
It's your uniqueness of your staff, the culture that you have. And we have a unique culture that we're gonna dig, we're gonna ask questions. We're not scared to, to meet the challenges. We're not here as computer geeks trying to clack, clack, clack on the keyboard. We actually have people here who have been in the car business, experienced the pressures, and can actually talk to you from that perspective. So again, when I talk to my clients, I say, I'm a car dog. And so happened, I learned digital. So I'm gonna to talk to you from the car dog language to the digital language. And that's what makes us unique. And of course, you know, we're the best. We got another question, okay. Okay, so the next question is, to what degree will we work with our dealers with uh, Google Analytics and will we help them set up goals and so forth? Guess what, we already do that. You don't even have to ask us. We have goals set up. Now, if you want specific goals for yourself, we'll set that up too. Um, we work deep with our dealers because we want them to understand exactly what's happening too. We don't wanna keep them in the dark and act like we're geniuses. We want to be able to show them exactly how it works and, and, and actually be engaged with them on what goals they're trying to achieve. What good does it do for us to set goals and they're not lining up with the goals that you have? It's all about you. It's not about us. Same, same way you treat your customer. It's all about them, not about you. Was, I think um, I don't see any more questions up there, so I think that was the last question. Um, it was a pleasure. Um, I, I hope to... Um, be able to see a lot of people request the scorecard and be able to use it. And um, hopefully this was useful for you. And don't forget, we're going to send out the recording to you. So that way you can uh, listen to this again, um, if you wish. Have a good day.